going to speak about the voluntary disclosure program in Brazil, which came into law this month in April. And we have very short time because the program will end at the end of October. Today we have a special guest with us, an expert, an international tax lawyer from Sao Paulo, Brazil, Dr. Simoes Bata. And here is Enzo Caputo with SwissBankingLawyers.com. I'm Swiss banking lawyer and assisting clients of all over the world having secret accounts in Switzerland to become legal. Now I want to give the word to Simoes Bata because he is the expert with this law in Brazil, with this new law in Brazil. This law, is, the name of this law is EHICT. Hi Simonesh, how are you today? Hi Enzo, I'm doing great. It's a pleasure to be here with you. I feel honored to be here by your side, uh, trying to clarify some points of this law, which is a little bit complicated, but I think it's an, an essential for Brazilians and it, it is a really good opportunity for them to legalize their assets. So, and so basically the purpose, we're going to analyze some questions regarding the law and- Brazil the needs a lot of money, correct? Yeah. The yeah. government is looking for new funds. Yeah, that's it. Brazil is facing a huge crisis and we are facing some problems with the economy. So Brazil is in need of this money. So this is uh, one of the biggest reasons of the law. Well, who should declare? Who should declare the funds? Yeah, we are going to analyze this. His main questions, which I think it's really interesting. Uh, so what is the purpose of the law? Who should declare? What are the benefits for those who are here? And how to join the voluntary disclosure program? So the purpose of the law, as you said, and so because you know that Brazil is facing a huge crisis, isn't it? Yes, yes. Everybody knows. Everybody knows. <laughs> Even and... in Switzerland, everybody knows. <laughs> okay. Yes, and I'm convinced there is a lot of money in Switzerland yeah. uh, owned by Brazilian uh, account holders. Yeah, it's true. Uh, so the purpose of the law, and so basically it's to, to make the regularization or the legaliz legalization of non-declared assets, offshore assets, and um, the law is very eclectic. You may declare properties, apartments, apartments, uh, cars, but especially in this case between Switzerland and Brazil, I think it's really interesting for bank accounts, isn't it? Yeah, exactly, for bankable assets, because you have to know that 30% of all the liquid money, 30% of all bankable assets are managed in Switzerland. Among the 30%, there are for sure a lot of Brazilian clients, they need to legalize their secret accounts to sleep better during the night because this starts to become criminal because we are living in another world in a much more transparent world. And the communication starting from 2018 will be very, very efficient between Switzerland and Brazil. So there is no room anymore to have secret assets not disclosed in the country of residence. I assisted many clients in Italy, in France, in Germany, which uh, all these clients are happy to have done this, done this step and to have disclosed their secret accounts in Switzerland. They are very happy because they sleep well now. And you know, to have such an account, such a secret account is not good for the health. Believe mm -hmm. me, it's not good. I have mm -hmm. seen that among my Italian clients. So they feel much better now after having done this disclosure. Yes, and so I hope Brazilians realize that this is a good opportunity and I'm glad uh, to hear that from you because you're a specialist uh, in, in banking law. So if you're saying this, uh, that this is a good opportunity, for sure from the tax perspective, it, it is a good opportunity, but you're a banking uh, specialist lawyer and you're saying that this is also a good opportunity. So It's uh, only 20%. It's yeah. only, at the end of the day, it's only 20% because of this currency situation. Oh, so good. compared to other countries, 20% is not much. If mm -hmm. you see in Canada, in Canada they, they paid 40%. Wow, that's, that's huge. So that's you huge. pay only 20%, it's a unique opportunity to do this as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. So in analyzing the, the other questions, who should declare the secret assets? Uh, the person must be a resident or domicile in Brazil. It must be a, a Brazilian or someone who was resident in Brazil on December 31st of 2014 and the law uh, specifies some limitations regarding some specific situations uh, like someone involved in criminal proceedings 
and especially for politically exposed persons, Enzo, because you know that since Brazil is facing a huge crisis and uh, we have a history of corruption, I think that you know that, right? Yes, yes, I know. But we had the same law in Italy. The Italian voluntary disclosure, exactly, it's exactly the same. People involved in criminal proceedings can not participate to the Italian voluntary disclosure program. The same is for Brazil. Mm -hmm. It's not for heavy criminals. It's something for somebody who have, has issue with taxes, with taxation, but these are not criminal people. These are normal people, hardworking people. These are business people, international successful people, and they should legalize their fund. Yeah, true, and so and even if it, the, since so the very important topic, uh, the person. If the person is involved in something with the tax evasion or something like that, uh, the law guarantees an amnesty for this kind of situation. So I think that the law intention in Brazil is not to protect uh, the corrupted government or someone involved with drug trafficking. Exactly what you said, the people that work, uh, hard workers, and then uh, didn't declare before, but then now they're willing to legalize. You know, the world has changed and tax evasion is more and more considered as a serious crime. If you, for example, if you, an example, Al Capone, Al Capone was condemned 11, 11 year prison just for tax evasion. So in the state, it was, uh, it was always a very heavy criminal act, but not in Switzerland. In Switzerland, it's even not a criminal act because in Switzerland, there are very small tax evasion, but in other countries, as in Italy or Brazil, the tax evasion is huge. Yeah, true. So, Analyzing the, the slides, what are the benefits for those who disclose their assets? As I said before, there is an amnesty for the crimes specified by the law, uh, like tax evasion and crime, crimes against the tax order. I'm not sure if you know that, Enzo, but it, it is a crime just to maintain deposits, undeclared deposits in Switzerland. Brazilians who have accounts in Switzerland and they didn't declare it before, that's just by itself, it's a crime. So this is a good opportunity to get rid of that criminal uh, possibility and get an amnesty. And also uh, the person who complies with this law will get the amnesty from fines and accrued interest payments, amnesty from under reporting of Brazilian capital abroad, that's, that's a specific declaration of uh, capitals in, uh, and assets in, the, in offshore, which is also always a good point. Uh, one thing that probably international uh, people and clients and Brazilians would like to know is how to join this uh, program. So it's uh, kind of easy, you just have to fill the DEPCAT, which is something that is going to be online at the side of the uh, Brazilian Federal Fiscal Authority. Similar as in Italy. Also in Italy, the voluntary disclosure, the filing happened online. Okay, yeah, interesting. In Italy it was yeah. the same. Yeah, it was oh, exactly okay. the same. The filing happened online. And only the Italian tax lawyer, the so-called commercialisti, had a, sp a special code to communicate with the Italian tax authorities, with the Agenzia delle Entrate, with the specific code, the specific internet line, they communicate with the Entrate. In, the, in Brazil, it seems to be the same. It, it seems that Brazil is following the international standard, right? Exactly, yeah, exactly. But... More or less, these voluntary disclosure programs are quite similar, very similar, and they rely on the American. So the, the Italian voluntary disclosure was basically copied from the uh, offshore voluntary disclosure program from the United States of America, the so-called OVDP program. And okay. we assist, our law firm assisted many American clients to become legal uh, and to have legalized money because the penalties in the United States are very, very, very hard. You go in jail and the voluntary disclosure in the United States costs, can cost until 50% of your money. You can oh. lose 50% of the mm -hmm. money. So yeah. Brazil with 20% is a very human a very human rate. Good, good to know that, Enzo. It's, it's really good to have that exchange of information with you because uh, we can explain this to the Brazilian citizens and I think it's a, a good exchange of information. So regarding the, the catch, as we were saying, the legal tax would be 30%, but the effective rate something around 21%. I say that because it depends on the currency fluctuation of the US dollar. And the second thing that is uh, important is that the Central Bank of Brazil will have access to the information, it's going to be automatic. The international outlook of this whole VDP programs, uh, the VDP, is 
the international experience regarding these programs with USA, Italy, Germany, and as you said before, I didn't know that, but you told me that Canada was 40%. Yeah. So the I think that the Canada and also France, France was France. even more expensive, and the sanction in France are very hard, very hard. So that's one of the reasons why so many people from France migrated to Switzerland. They relocated to Switzerland. They changed domicile. Many rich people in the very last months due to the, to the refugee crisis and the terrorist attack in Brussels, many rich people came from Brussels and Paris. They came to live to Switzerland. They relocated to Switzerland because in Switzerland they feel more secure. For example, Paris Hilton came to Switzerland, but not for the refugees. But there were many rich people from France and Brussels who uh, came uh, relocating to, to Switzerland for these reasons. You know, and so in Brazil, I have many clients that are asking me because uh, this is all, all over the news regarding the Panama Papers, the Swiss leaks, all these informations uh, that are given by the news. And I think that everybody is afraid and should be because it's something that could get them in the future. So it's good to have this program uh, in Brazil. And especially another information that is really important between Brazil and Switzerland is that Brazil signed a treaty, a kind of a treaty with Switzerland in November exactly. 2015. Uh, I think uh, it's, it's the automatic even, exchange of information. It's even yeah. on YouTube, isn't yeah. it? Andrew? Yeah, exactly. There is a very interesting video on YouTube. You can see the Swiss tax the Swiss tax authorities uh, on the same table with Brazilian uh, tax authorities uh, working uh, together and there is no room for secret accounts anymore. They will really change the information at the latest in 2018. But as uh, Simoes said, you know, the Panama Papers case uh, revealed, showed that this information cannot be kept secret anymore. There is no secrecy anymore. There is huge pressure on the Swiss banking secrecy from the United States and from, from all over the world, from the OECD. And uh, these times are over. These secret accounts, these numbered accounts, this is something for the movies, but not anymore for a serious account holder, for a serious investor. He, he should keep the funds in Switzerland for sure because uh, political circumstances, stability, inflation, multi-currency account, a lot of advantages. That's why 30% of all bankable assets of the world are here in Switzerland. But this money must be here as declared money, as disclosed money, as fully legal money. And it's better for your health, believe me. I assisted many Italian clients they did the voluntary disclosure and they are so happy now to have done this important step. They sleep well, it's better for the health. And it's it's good to have this information from you, Enzo, because you're a, a banking lawyer, a specialist. So if you're saying that, that the fiscal transparency in Switzerland is something important, I think that as a tax lawyer, I think that there is no option. There, there is no option, exactly. There, to comply. there is absolutely yeah. no option. So, uh, as Enzo said, we have uh, this international outlook. Uh, this is something that came out. We have the Global Transparency Forum, the end of bank secrecy laws in Switzerland. This is something that Enzo told me. And 2015, many bilateral agreements with tax havens. There's also some information here for the amendment of, uh, to the Mutual Administrative Assistance Agreement on Tax Affairs. And the end of basically, it's the end of the banking of banking secrecy. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And so, as Enzo mentioned, uh, the U.S. FATCA is uh, something that was a pressure, isn't it? Uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. And what I have to say regarding FATCA, the Americans demanded account information from account holders going back to first August two thousand and eight. So we have full retroactivity here. Normally, if a new law comes into force. A new law can not can never be retro uh, can never have retroactive effect. But regarding taxes, everything is possible. So the Americans they asked all the information. The Americans even asked so-called lever lists from the Swiss banks. They asked lists with all the names of the people of the banking um, account holders with the names lists with the names of people who left the bank. Who, for example went out of the banking system and they have, uh, have uh, invested in gold, in physical gold here in Switzerland, or have invested in real estate. That's why they went back. But based on the lever lists, they have all the names of the clients who leave the bank. So even these people, there is no chance, there is no escape. The best way to do it is to legalize your funds. And here in, in Brazil, we have only 20% at the end of the day. 
there is no there is no choice there, you don't have to say too much you have to do it and, and that's it I'm delighted with all uh, this information and so you yeah. know a lot about banking secrecy the end of the banking secrecy and the fiscal transparency it's really good to to, to learn a lot with this and there are some uncertainties of the law uh, regarding Brazil as always some questions uh, have been made by the constitutionality of the law if Brazil uh, makes it not constitutional what happens I don't think this will happen I think that we we, we will privilege the principle of security of the law and the second thing that that we've been facing is the regarding the secrecy of the uh, in the use of this information as you as you know brazil is a big country is a beautiful country but yeah. we have some uh, criminal issues and uh, some people are afraid of the disclosure of the information but i think that the law tries to protect those people even in switzerland yeah. the swiss bank remains it doesn't remain for tax reasons, but it remains for confidentiality, you know, to protect the family, to, to protect the privacy. The bank secrecy remains, but not for tax reasons. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think that people can feel safe and it's better to comply. One thing that is interesting is that in Brazil we have th three layers of taxation. The first one is the Brazilian, uh, the federal layer, the state layer, the second is the state layer, and the third one is the municipality layer. In this case, the law creates a legal fiction. It's going to be considered capital gains received in December 31st. And you said, and so that... In Switzerland, Switzerland is the, the same. same. We have also three levels. We have the federal level mm -hmm. in Bern, that is the capital of Switzerland is Bern, a federal level, then we have the cantonal level, and uh, we have the municipality level. So we have okay. three levels of taxation. So okay. that makes the taxation system quite complicated in Switzerland. But compared to other countries, Switzerland is very, very competitive in taxation. That's why so many international companies are based in Switzerland. All the big companies like Nestle, like Google or whatever, they have the head offices in Switzerland because of moderate uh, taxation and many other advantages. Okay. So we also analyzed the exclusion of some politically exposed persons and governmental officers. If uh, this They is cannot a, participate they in the cannot program, correct? Yes. Yeah, this is something that... In Brazil, I think that this is really important because the, the people in Brazil, they don't want this person, uh, someone involved with politics to get this advantage. So it's something that... No discount an for politically exposed yeah. persons. No yeah. discount. No, no, no. For corruption, no, no discount. So okay. the legal certainty of the law, we have the amnesty of the crimes specified in the law, the legalization of the assets, which is, and so in my opinion, as a tax lawyer, it's really interesting, but I think that you could uh, give us some uh, points on this because it's better for the person who complies, right? Because he'll be able to move the assets, but or he can even live in Switzerland, isn't it? You know, it? if you don't do the voluntary disclosure, you know what happened? It's the same what happened for the Italian clowns. The Swiss banks, they will create so-called exit desks. That means if you still maintain the secret accounts, you can do nothing with your assets. Nothing at all, you cannot invest. And more than that, you will end in an exit desk. An exit desk means that the compliance officer will manage your account. So you cannot call your bank as before, you know, your private banker and say, please transfer, please execute this payment, please do this, please do that. They will do nothing for you. Even investments are not allowed. So you have de facto, you have your funds blocked. It's like having a blocked account. You can even not do investments. Everything will be converted in one currency. The money is just there. You can do nothing with the money. It's a kind of expropriation. So I, my strongest advice, do the voluntary disclosure and you have access again to your funds. Don't stay with your secret account. You can do nothing with this money. It will become worse and worse. And all these people now, all these Italian people having now their account practically frozen on this exit desk, they are very, they are very, uh, you know, they, they are scared. They, they are expropriated. They lost everything, basically. Not only the, the, what they have to pay to the tax office. They are practically expropriated. So my advice, do this program, legalize your money, and sleep well during the night. Oh, and uh, it's truly, really, when I hear you talking to me, it's something that uh, really important. It hurts, it, it hurts, hurts the it health, hurts. you know, yeah, having yeah. such an I account know. hurts the health. But but it's good to hear that from you because you're yeah. a specialist. So if you're saying that, a more strong conviction that it's uh, good to participate in the program and it's that's the best option. 
to comply with the Brazilian government. You know, I can tell you the Italian program. At beginning of the Italian program, the people was very skeptical, and you know the mentalities between Italians and Brazilians is quite similar. So the Italians were very, very skeptical. After six months of the program, we in Italy not thousands filed for the program, even not thousands. At, at the end of the program, certainly it occurs all the people filed in a very short time, and it was quite a success for the Renzi government. I think the same can happen for, for Brazil. Yeah, so it, it, it is the best option for sure. There are some more aspects of the law that should be analyzed, uh, and, and there are some uh, guarantees for the, the person who adheres is that the their cut cannot be used as the single element uh, or sign in, investiga in investigative or criminal procedure. And it, it also can be used to support administrative tax procedures, uh, which is uh, really, really good for the, the someone willing to participate. The protection of the information in their cut uh, is going to be equivalent to the protection of tax secrecy. So it's going to be a restricted information. Brazil is already prepared to deal with that kind of information. There is a specific law uh, which says that a breach of confidentiality not authorized by law is considered a criminal offense and also our criminal code uh, says that someone who works for the government and reveals uh, this kind of information also commits a crime so this is a protection for the it's client. a protection for the client no, yeah it's, very it's, interesting. It's, it's interesting to know that uh, that brazil has protects have, privacy have that this kind of uh, laws right Participation to Hercht and so it's the participation and the, it's really easy. We're going to see that the consequences but, of joining. Uh, it's mm -hmm. very short. It ends uh, in yeah. end of October. So yeah, it's unfortunately, short. that that is a point that as a tax specialist, I don't think it was really interesting. But the law came out like this. It's just from April to uh, the end of October. So it's a lot of work to do and people should be prepared to comply. That's it. So basically, we adherent will have to make some adjustments in their annual declaration. They'll have also to rectify their latest uh, declarations. And it, uh, the adherents could be the individual or even a legal entity. A legal person could participate in the program. Uh, it's going to be the regularization of resources, the amnesty for criminal and fiscal purposes. And uh, one thing that I, uh, it's very uh, important, it's very yes. important, it's the possibility to keep the assets abroad, isn't it? And yeah, very interesting point. Also in Italy, we had the same law, uh, there was no uh, imposed repatriation request. So uh, most of Italians left the money here in Switzerland for security reasons. And, and so I, I'm making uh, many, many questions to you, <laughs> but it's, it's interesting for me. Do you compare think, a little bit? Yeah, yeah, it's good because uh, as a, tech, a Brazilian tax lawyer, I'm also learning with you. So the, what do you think? It, is it good to leave the assets in Switzerland? Because uh, Switzerland has good banks, isn't it? So the protection yes, is going to be good. 30% of asset before 30% all money is invested here in Switzerland. And the owners of 30% of the money can not be wrong. All these people cannot be wrong. So it's a good idea to have the funds here because here you have multi-currency accounts, a stable environment and stability. Stability. Switzerland is a stable country. So there is a good idea to live and to diversify also the assets. Maybe not everything in Switzerland. You have to diversify, you know. Don't put all eggs in one basket. Just diversify. I mean, your diversification, you should consider Switzerland. Switzerland, it's a, it's a must in each diversification if you do asset protection and, and, and wealth planning. Yeah, I could say that for Brazilians, when you say stability, for sure it's something that draws yeah. the attention. That we cry for stability. You know, Swiss bank accounts are passed over from generation to generation. So there are many clients having uh, accounts which uh, the grandfather or the grand grandfather uh, activated these accounts even before the war. Now uh, these accounts survived uh, a couple of generations. One case I want to just to tell you the count of Lenin. Lenin, the Russian revolutionary, opened an account before the First World War. So before Lenin was uh, was uh, put on a train and uh, transferred to uh, Leningrad to Saint Petersburg, he had an account in Switzerland, a very a small account. But this account was discovered when they made the investigation with the Jewish money, you know, with the Holocaust money. And they discovered Lenin's account still existing. So Lenin's account survived the Russian Revolution, 
the First World War, the Second World War, and the Soviet Union. So uh, the Swiss account survived even the Soviet Union, so this is the best advertisement for the Swiss bank account. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. So the requirements to declare you should have been or be the owner of or resource holder in periods prior to uh, December 31st, although it does not have that, although if you do not have the balance or funds or title anymore, you should also declare the law uh, allows you to participate. And we will have to deal with some specific things regarding the tax planning after the declaration. I would say that the first step is to comply with the government, make the DERCAT. The second step is going to be to have a good tax planning for the, those assets. And the third aspect uh, that should be considered by someone who is willing to adhere is that to have some kind of protection if uh, something goes wrong. So it's it's good to, to analyze a decision by these three angles. So to have, to have an asset protection strategy in place in case of rainy days. Yeah, that's it. Perfect answer. So the general rule for the law is that it's going to be the assets. It's a, a, a photo of the total amount of the assets in December 31st of 2014. For valuation purposes of those assets, uh, the law says that you'll use the dollar rate uh, as 2.66. So if you had an euro account or something like that, you'll have to convert it to dollar as you use it. After that, the conversion of 2.66 in comparison to real, and then uh, you'll have the total amount. The dollar rate on 20, on April 27 went up. In Brazil, the dollar went up. Now it's going a little bit down, but you have some exchange variation, and this is something that the client that is going that is willing to comply with the act should analyze too. Uh, regarding the heritage, if you the law also applies for inheritance procedures, uh, the res, the person Very responsible for yeah. the inheritance procedure could com comply with the federal government too. I think that there are some cases which this could be really interesting for inheritance procedures. The experience, you told me that you had some experience uh, with that, right? And yes, yes, uh, with inheritance cases. Inheritance cases. And the data, this is a typical example of what is going to happen. Uh, and the reason, one of the main reasons that I said that the effective rate is going to be something uh, around 22.50%. The reason is that the X that had an amount to be sell in dollars in December 31st, if he had $1 million, now, uh, with the quotation of the dollar, he has uh, something around 3 million reais. But the law considers the total amount to be the quotation of the dollar in, two, in, in December 31st. So actually, the tax basis is going to be 2 million. And if you apply the 30% into that 2 million, you get, in this example, 798,000 reais, which is the total payable income per plus fine and that compared to the 3,550,000 uh, reais is just 22.5%. So this is a basic analysis of the law. And Enzo, Thank you, Simoes. Thank, thank you, you very much for all thank your you. answers, your interesting information. Thank you for inviting me. Thank, thank you, you. It was a pleasure to invite you. And I want to tell to all the people listening to us, to all the viewers of this YouTube video, if you have a question, pick up the phone and give me a call. It's fully free of charge. Pick up the phone and call me immediately on 0041-4421-4404. Thank you very much for your time. Be rich and remain rich. Have a wonderful day.